afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope everyone's having a good first official first day of High Point Market. Uh, welcome to Universal Furniture. My name is Neil McKenzie, uh, Vice President of Marketing here. Uh, if it's your first time in our space or if you've come back, uh, thank you. And thanks for uh, spending some of your time at market here. Uh, we have a ton of things to see uh, this market from a product standpoint. Uh, Aaron Valencic, uh, Aaron V with Universal, is up on floor three. Uh, we have a new... Um, uh, cut, uh, new, our new special order upholstery offering is on floor one. Uh, we have a new collection called Nostalgia, uh, kind of that uh, grand millennial, if you will. Uh, are there any grand millennials out there? No. No one never knows what I'm talking about. Okay, well, yeah. All right, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and then uh, we also have the Designer's Lounge, uh, which has the beauty bar. So if you want to get a hair touch up uh, or get a libation, uh, later this afternoon, please feel free to do so. And then I would just ask if you want to see anything or shop the showroom, just uh, check in at the front desk and they'll be happy to set you up. We also have these little scanners that allow you to scan every single thing in the showroom has been marked. Uh, it can go into like a virtual shopping cart, if you will. So when you leave and check out and return the scanner, you'll get an email with everything that you scan. So it's, it's a little easier than simply referring to your pictures. So uh, please take advantage of all that. Just check in at the front desk. Uh, today, uh, Lori's here to present a wellness CEO, and wellness has obviously been a term that's pretty much in vogue, I'd say, and in so many levels. So uh, I'm sure you're going to explain all of that to everyone. But um, we're uh, thankful that you're here and uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say and share. And uh, we also have, um, we are recording this event. We have 15 other events uh, through the course of market here. So if you haven't signed up for one, if you've missed one, if you'd like to refer to one, but you can't physically come, uh, we will be uh, posting those all on our website after market. So. Um, yeah, so thank you. thanks again, Lori, for being here. Thank you, Universal, and thank you, Neil. Um, I love the Universal showroom, so if you haven't walked through it, um, great products. And um, let's thank Universal for having us. Thank you, Neil. So I'm Lori Miller. Hi, everyone. And this is going to be a wellness CEO. So if you're part of um, ASID or any of the affiliations that require a credit, I was told by IDCEC that they have an app on your phone, and I will give you the code to the seminar, and you can just upload it. If you have a problem, I have my cards, um, or you can just email me your name, and I'll submit the list. Um, but it should be pretty easy, except I'm not technologically savvy, so <laughs> we'll give it our best shot. And then at the end, it will show the QR code as well, so we'll make sure you get that CEO, because that's important. Um, if you have not, um, if you arrived early and you have not taken any of the samples, please feel free after, um, and I will try and pass them out during. Um, I have some essential oils, uh, which is peppermint, also gets rid of headaches, and thieves, which is antimicrobial, lemon, which will lift you up, and we have a purification, so a little bit of goodies. And I also have a pamphlet on one of the products that I will be discussing throughout. And we have some samples of the new Kravik um, salient uh, fabric. So I will tell you a little bit about me. I'm Lori Miller. Hi, <laughs> LGC Interior Design. And I have a little bit of a journey. And we'll talk about why we're here um, and what we're going to get out of the seminar, because that's important. And then you'll learn about how I got into this, which was kind of a bit of a journey. Um, pack my bags and keep going. So first, we're going to learn how essential oils can replace the hazardous chemicals in your products that you're using for cleaning or for you know residential commercial. And not just essential oils, but the contaminants that are in some of the products that we use. We're going to provide you with the ability to consider alternative products in your designs, whether it's cork or bamboo in your flooring, alternative paints, um, and all the different products such as salient technology. We're going to understand what is essential to promote wellness and how that contributes in the building arena. And we're going to help you to understand what sensory design is and help you to become comfortable integrating this into your everyday practice. So. Who am I? How did I get here? So my family was in building. Both my grandparents were contractors. And I thought I was going to be an architect. I'm of an age where women were not architects. So what did I do? Um, so I became a fine artist. I went to school, started fine art, painting, won awards. 
And I had a professor in college that said, you will never be an artist. And I said, okay, I believe you, right? Because what else do you do with a professor? And I ended up going into psychology, and here's where my journey really begins. So I started working at Rikers Island. No idea what Rikers Island was. It's the largest jail facility in New York, well, actually in the United States. So it is, I will read this, 413.17 acres. It's the largest correctional and mental health institution. Now they've closed part of it, so we're no longer the largest mental health institution. I think the streets of New York is the largest mental health institution <laughs> with over 3,000 homeless people. Um, so here I was, 20 plus years old, I'm 60, 20 plus years old and going through Rikers Island. So um, we were opening one of the buildings and at that point I was a unit chief, meaning I was running all 12 of the psych units. And we couldn't open, we opened one of the buildings and then they closed it and they said, oh my God, you can't work in here. It's filled with methane gas. So I didn't know what methane gas was, but I knew we couldn't work in there and it was not gonna be a good experience. They closed it for several months and then reopened it. We don't know if it's still filled with methane gas, but they did reopen it and said it was fine. Then a lot of the officers that I was working with, correction officers and staff who had been there for a number of years, started coming down with cancer, thyroid problems. People were unfortunately passing away and nobody really wanted to deal with it but we were looking at leaking roofs and some mold issues. We were looking at the methane gas in some of the buildings. We were looking at Legionnaire's disease from some of the water. Um, several of the buildings had issues. Um, so there was a multitude. There was asbestos. They were doing asbestos removal. We're sitting in our cubicles and all of a sudden the guys come in with their hazard suits and they're like, well, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're gonna remove the asbestos. Well, why aren't we removed? <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing suits, we're not. So now we have the asbestos contaminants. And then, of course, we had lead paint because the jails were started at the time of lead paint. Rikers was also built, it was a landfill. So there's a whole lot of issues. And at that time, um, I was getting married and bought my first house. And I was like, okay, I am going to move into a wallpaper store because I can't find the right wallpaper for my kitchen. So here I was, and I'm going every week, and I'm helping people because I knew all the brands and all the colors and everything. And the owner of the wallpaper store after a year says, why don't you have a job here? And I said, okay, I can work here on Saturdays. I have nothing better to do than run 12 psych units and work on a Saturday. So I did, right? That's what every person does. So I started getting into textiles, and eventually I ended up going back to school. So now I'm integrating all of my design and experience with my psychology and with all the principles of design, which was so much fun. And I loved it. And I was like, this is so great. So all of a sudden, I'm, I start to get sick. And I'm like, wait, I have thyroid problems. I have bladder cancer. I'm like, what the heck is this? And I go down the rabbit hole of Google, like every one of us does. And I start to learn a lot from functional medicine doctors and from doing my own research. And what I find is that we're very tactile. Um, that mold is a severe issue. Um, and there are tests. Um, there are MRIs that can show how much mold is in your system. So um, it became a problem. So we talk about the methane gas, right? We talk about mold, we talk about asbestos, we talk about lead paint. How do these things affect us? So methane gas, you have dizziness, you have headaches, a feeling of fatigue, it can be combustible. Now on the plus side, there are things that they can do with methane gas that are positive. So it's a matter of knowing where it is, how it's harnessed, and how we can use it versus how we can harm people with it. Then we talk about asbestos, which causes cancer. Now we remember the hazmat suits, and there I am sitting there with the asbestos. Um, mesothelioma, asbestosis, lung cancer, and there's a lot of people who have lung cancer right now, um, and there's a lot of different studies, and thank God for studies, because many people are now living healthy lives with you know, all the different drugs and um, modern technology that's out there. So thank God for studies. Then we go into leaks and mold. So mold, forgetfulness, allergy symptoms, fatigue, brain fog, headaches, fever. Those are some of the symptoms of thyroid issues too. 
So mold does affect the interior of our bodies and our systems. And this, we hear people, I have brain fog. I have muscle aches. So how many people are in Florida, of course, right now, horribly so, or after Sandy in New York, where they're experiencing these problems, most likely due to mold. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be a doctor. But that would be the first thing that someone should check um, because it does affect us. And there is, I mean, we live on water. So that's a huge problem. Lead paint was a huge issue. Um, first noticed probably late 60s, early 70s. We now have free lead paint, you know, lead paint free, lead paint free, lead free paints. Thank you. <laughs> Brain fog. Um, we have lead free paints uh, and we have testing and we have people, you know, painters have to sign when we go into buildings that we have tested if this is lead and they have to do removal properly. Thank God, because kids were eating it. That showed a lot of learning disabilities and Again, that affects our sensory system. So as we get through the presentation, we'll go into that as well. But these are some things to understand. And seizures and, of course, even death, which we don't want to look at or like to talk about. Carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So when you have too many people in an unventilated area, there's a lot of carbon dioxide that's produced. So what that does is it causes sleepiness, headaches, restlessness, tingling, tired, elevated heart rate, and the list goes on. So here we were, back to my history, in a clinic with no windows, because we were in jail, with no ventilation, and all of a sudden we're like falling asleep at our desks. And there must have been 20 of us in a 10 by 10 area sharing cubicles with inmates, of course, very safe. Um, so, and we were all falling asleep and we didn't know why. So we called in an, you know, an air tester and sure enough, there was too much carbon dioxide. So we had to limit the number of people that were in the space. Why provide ventilation? That would make sense. So we just, you know, cut the people and we had to take shifts on who was going to work in that area at that time. So this is also a big deal, and there are products that are coming out on the market to assist with this, but there's also air ventilation systems that can warn us, um, which we'll talk about. So what do we have? When a building is not sustainably built, when it's not well designed, when things aren't taken into consideration, we have cancers, we have thyroid issues, we have autoimmune issues, we have respiratory ailments, and we have headaches. Surprise, surprise, that's half of our state right now is everybody's feeling sick, functional medicine doctors are at their highest, um, and we're concerned with wellness, understandably so. Now, if we think about it, back in the 60s, 70s, that's when linoleum products were coming in the market. That's when you had all your nylon, so that's when sustainability, we really started hearing about the sick building syndrome. So sick building syndrome, as we transition, um, there are gender differences in sick building syndromes. Women tend to experience more symptoms. Known fact, I don't know if I'm gonna get penalized for saying that right now, but it is true. We have, we're, our eyes are more sensitive. Um, so we report it more and people don't really take it. They're like, oh, you're just sensitive, but it is a truth. Um, there are personal differences, work related and building factors. So what happens? We're on stimuli overload right now, especially we have text communications, cell phones, computers, laptops. We have noise. We <laughs> right, I think that was a train. <laughs> so we're bombarded constantly with stimuli. So how does that affect us? Obviously on the five senses. So your sight, your hearing, your touch, your smell. And I do go into taste, but it's really not part of the presentation, but it is important because that is how one of our senses. So with sight, we always want to see balance. We want harmony. Um, color is experience. We see that in de designing for the aging. We see that in designing for kids. Color is so important. Primary colors are very stimulating. So when you have someone who has sensory issues, we have to be mindful of designing with bright colors because how they experience that is gonna be very different than someone without those factors. 
conveyance of information. You know, you want to limit things one at a time and try and not overstimulate the sight sense. Mood, right? How many studies, color studies, have been done where you're affected by mood? Green, balance, you know, blue, cool. So these things are very important, and that's part of where we design for sight. And as designers, um, I don't know how many people in this room are designers, anybody? Retail, um, you know, you wanna make sure that what you're doing is pleasant, right? It, whether it's a gym, because you want people to feel like, you know, they're comfortable in the gym, that they wanna work out, that they're energized, but you don't want it to be like, oh, we walk in and it's confusing and chaotic and where they're looking at something and getting hurt. Also in a nursery, right, you want things, you want the baby to sleep, you want the baby to play. So these are things that we take into consideration very seriously as designers and as retailers as well. Sound. So there are many um, products that limit acoustics, uh, sound absorption, and then we have microphones that enhance sound, so this is good. Wind chimes can be very soothing, and we get a little bit, that's where we get a little bit into maybe the feng shui or, you know, some of the outdoor sounds where you want it peaceful or zen um, when we think of wind chimes. Noise machines, also very important, especially um, in psychology. When you're going into the therapist's office, you don't want the person in the waiting room to hear what you have to say. So um, noise machines. And also at night, it helps people to sleep if they have the waves or they, you know, some sort of auditory sensory experience. And it, um, just as an aside, I listen to Esther Hicks and I do um, the abundance meditations. So at the end of um, the meditation, it goes ding and you hear the little gong. So that's your signal like, oh, okay, I'm awake now and I'm now out of my zone. So let's talk about touch for a minute. And I'm gonna bring in the Kravit uh, salient technology. It's, Kravit has a new, and I'm gonna touch on this again later, but um, the new fabric, and it's soft, it's boucle, which seems to be the latest and greatest in um, furniture design. As we go through the showrooms, every showroom has boucle. Um, so it uses a thermal body heat, and it's a natural product that they've created patented technology called Salient Design, so you can read about it. But again, it's soft. It's something we look for when we're going for comfort or an appeal because it, it's your sight and your touch. So we have hard. So if you walk around the showrooms, you see a lot of metal. Um, we're seeing a lot of wood, right? And these are hard thing, surfaces that create a sensory experience. Um, metal, wood. Um, so these are some of the things that we're gonna see. We see leather. We see this boucle, we're seeing a lot of velvets. I just came out of Design Master and they have some new velvet that is absolutely stunning and soft. So that's, again, it touches, it, it's a touch. You wanna feel it, you wanna curl up on your sofa, you wanna go to bed and feel soft in your Egyptian sheets. So these are very important when we're designing for wellness. And then we talk about smell. And smell is connected to the brain center of memory and emotions. Um, I, part of my history was working for the Queens District Attorney where I ran the Crime Victims Program. One of the things that we did with people who had been abused or had been assaulted is they remember um, things by smell. So they remember the person's cologne or if they were near, unfortunately, a garbage um, or anything, that's one of the things that'll trigger the piece that the police will use to identify what happened and where the aggressor is. So our brain is the center of memory and smell. I mean, how many of you have had a grandparent and you remember their perfume or their cologne um, or baking uh, growing up in your home, right? Chocolate chip cookies. Uh, maybe Christmas was peppermint, I, you know, so how many of you have had that experience? Yeah, I mean, for me, my favorite is cinnamon. I don't know if you want to know anything about me, but that's one of my favorites. Um, so it triggers emotions, it triggers feelings, it's calming and it's healing. 
as evidenced over here, we have the essential oil packets. Please feel free to take one. Um, you know, peppermint is energizing and it's a scent. And so, and a lemon is energizing. And then of course we have chamomile or some of the other florals which can calm us, um, also very important. And it can be invigorating and just, it could be just pleasant. <laughs> we also use smell when we're selling houses in real estate because you can burn the vanilla candle or you burn you know, cinnamon on the stove and you have that scent and aroma, which makes it appealing. It can also cover up a lot of things. So when you're staging, you may want to burn that candle. Also, fun fact, um, some of the glades and wicks can be irritating to say a word, because it does have some chemicals in it, so you may want to stick with something natural. I personally use Young Living, there's doTERRA, there's all sorts of brands, there's everything under the sun these days. So don't feel like it's just Young Living, it can be anything. I mean, even if you just use cinnamon stick in a pot of water, it, it works really well. And then we talk about taste, which really is not, but it is because we have water purification systems, which are very important and aid to wellness. If you remember, I spoke about Legionnaire's disease, so the water purification systems are huge. Um, lighting can increase the appeal of foods um, because we never use blue light in a, like in a supermarket or in a, a butcher because it would turn the steaks blue and that's not appealing. And again, you have, it triggers that sensory overload of taste. So you almost taste like a bad steak. Um, so you want to remember that lighting affects taste. And then we talk about candles mimicking the smell of fresh baked apple pie. And tasting in the true definition of the word is more on the health aspect than licking a pillow. So we understand the problem and what are some helpful, helpful products and what can we do because we don't want to feel helpless ever. And as designers, we have to take a stand and we have make a difference. So I talk about mindfulness. So what does this mean? Everybody's using the word mindfulness, right? How many of you? Like, let's do mindfulness. We have anxiety. We'll do mindfulness. Oh, talk space therapy. Sure, mindfulness. It just means stopping and taking a minute. So I'm going to go through a couple of, I say five minutes, but it's probably two or three. And I'd like everyone, after walking through market this morning, let's sit back and let's take a breath. So what we do is a four, seven, eight breath, and it helps to release some of the stress, and it relaxes the body, and it also clears the brain. It helps the oxygen. Um, it also helps people fall asleep. And it's great for people with anxiety um, because it does reset the system. So who's ready to take a little bit of a break? Everybody, show of hands, yes. <laughs> Thank you. So if you can breathe in for four seconds, and I'm gonna count the breath. So ready, one, two, breathe in. One, two, three, four, hold for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now we're gonna release the breath for a count of eight seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You wanna do it again? So, ready? Breathe in, four, three, two, one. Hold for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and breathe out, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And I can feel the energy. Like, it's just kind of like, oh, that felt good, right? Um, so if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's a great tool and a technique. Or if you have a client, that's like really, just tell them, you know, hey, listen, let's take a breath for a minute. So, and you can work through that with them in any way you feel like you can get that in. So there's an old saying, it said you have a good sniffer. So what does that mean? It means that you can smell. You smell a lot of things. You smell ammonia, you smell roses, you have a good sniffer, and scents are really important. 
So aromatherapy is the experience of actual oils, and they have that all over every commercial is, oh, the air purifier, oh, the air purifier. But there's also cleaning products, and cleaning products can be toxic. Um, I have a list of ones um, that, and I don't like to mention names, but like people, a lot of people use Myers um, cleaning products. And you might want to look at the ingredients because some of the ingredients are toxic. It does cause rashes. So you want to be careful when you're using your products to make sure that it's not toxic. And we have VOC, volatile organic compounds, and that's in paints. It is in cleaning products and it is in flooring products. Can't tell you how many times I've walked into a building and my eyes tear and all, I'm like assaulted by the scent. It's like, what are you using? Um, so you, again, we make a difference when we're in people's homes when we give them cleaning products. And what a great gift after you've done their office or after you've done their home and say, here, you can use this. Use it on your floors, use it on, you know, on your wood products and just general cleaning in your bathroom even. Um, I use the Thieves because it is antimicrobial um, and I just create a little mix for you know, cleaning, and it's perfect. I use it also in my laundry. So I like to think I smell good. <laughs> and then there's flooring products, because flooring products can have a lot of off-gassing. And recently someone um, had lung cancer, and they were assured, assured by the flooring distributor, and this is in Texas, um, that their product had no VOCs and no volatile compounds in it, and there wouldn't be an issue. And sure enough, they had a serious allergic reaction. We couldn't figure out what it is, so they called me. They're like, Lori, we don't know what it is. We were assured there's nothing in the product. I said, what did they use to put the floor down? So it was the glue that they used. So, it, you know, yeah, your flooring product may be clean, but what they're using for an adhesive is not. So you want to also be careful of that and make sure you're you know, whoever you're doing for your installs knows that, or your client makes sure, because sometimes they're purchasing for themselves. Um, and that could be a problem. And I think there's someone in here that was saying that they had an issue in their apartment um, where the paint had a lot of VOs of volatile organic compounds, and it was causing serious allergic reactions. And we just had a great conversation about that. So it's important to know. So what are the solutions? <laughs> As an interior designer, we're long known for creating spaces that are visually harmonious and that are designed to impact all of the senses. And when used, design speaks to the senses that can evoke comfort and relaxation, resulting in a need or want to spend more time in that space. And that's what we want. Unless, of course, we're in fast food and we want to get people in and out quickly. Wellness is becoming more of a focus along with self-care, and I think we see that across the board, and I think COVID accelerated that hugely. Um, and using mentioned techniques, we create feelings of harmony and balance, allowing wellness to occur, right? So we no longer use VOC compounds. We make sure that our products are clean and organic. We use great cleaning products. We use bamboo. We use cork. Um, we create spaces that are movable with movable walls. So COVID, we have space, hygiene, and sterilization. How many times have you walked in, you just stick your hand in, you don't touch anything, a glop of hand sanitizer comes out, and you're all good, right? And now, of course, in the bathrooms, when you're washing your hands and you have the hand dryers, so there's a lot of things that are for sterilization. So I talked about movable walls slightly, and that's one of the things that we see now, especially in corporate spaces. Um, I was in one of the showrooms this morning, and they had the space divided, and it looked like a plain sheetrock wall, but it was really on wheels, and they could move in any way they wanted. So even the showrooms are having that now, which is great. I'm going to talk about Halo for a little bit. I do have it over here. And it's an amazing new product that's on the market. It replaces the carbon dioxide um, detectors. And hopefully in the next year or two, it will replace all of the detection systems. So it's quite cool. It detects vaping. It detects noise level. It detects VOCs. It detects carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, um, smoke, hazards, 
Um, it's great. It's being used in the planes now because of vaping. And if you're in an apartment building and there's a, a quantity of people that's allowed, it will tell you the noise level. So it'll alert you that there's too many people and it's a fire hazard. Um, so Halo does some pretty cool uh, modern technology techniques. Um, it, so I, I love it. I think it's great. And hopefully we'll have it in more spaces. Um, it is available and it is out. I am not selling it, so, but it does so many different things for the wellness arena that it's phenomenal. There's also Cisco um, has come out, yeah, next on the list, uh, with a window treatment that uses solar technology. It will power our cell phones. It will power our laptops. And I had an interesting conversation, I think it was yesterday, um, where we were discussing that USB ports will no longer be in existence in the next two years, which prob probably will come out with the cellular technology from the window treatments as well. And the Halo device, when you have the privacy filter on the windows or on the glass, all you have to do, it's like Alexa, and go Halo privacy, and it will make the screen or make the window or make the wall privacy filtered. So it really does quite a bit and what we're looking at for new technology. Lighting needs are being considered with window placements. Um, also, just as a side fact, um, there's windows that are coming in for buildings where when you see the birds dive into the windows and then, of course, they're damning, you know, they're getting hurt, um, they now have, it's um, like a 3D hologram, so the bird sees itself and no longer dives into the window. So again, another sustainable piece that we should see in the next year or two that they're pushing. LED color change, chromotherapy. How many bathtubs do we see that now um, you can change color? Um, we're using lighting for all different sorts of healing techniques and for different moods, um, different color light bulbs. So chromotherapy is huge. Use of naturally sterilizing finishes and materials for high touch points, doorknobs, faucets. How many faucets do you have to wave? You know, you wave your hand and the faucets go on and there you go, totally perfect. Um, people will still yearn for tactility. I'm hoping it doesn't migrate to all surfaces because I do like to touch. I do like to turn on my faucet or just you know have that sense and creation of more inspired spaces because now we're designing with all of these products. New fabrics for wellness. We did touch on the salient technology. Uh, it's the first textile company to join the Good Future Design Alliance, committing to reducing waste by 50% over five years. I'm gonna talk a little bit universal. Miranda Kerr has her Tranquility Collection, and that also falls into the sustainability conversation. Um, but we'll go back to the wellness. And this performance tactile converts body heat into infrared energy. So that's also a great thing because we can use it for heat and reduce our electric use. So there are a number of manufacturers along High Point um, that really have promoted wellness. They're into sustainability. They use local source of employment. Um, Design Masters, Philips Company, Norwalk, Palachek has long been known to use recycled or sustainable materials. Uh, Terrier Stickley, I'll read the list, Theodore Alexander, Jaipur, um, Universal also has a certificate of compliance because when we here in the East get products from California, it has, it's usually formaldehyde free and it passes California compliance. When we get it here, it has a sticker that says, caution may promote cancer. So we want to be careful. Universal has taken care of that with a certificate of compliance on their products. Windy Okana Art and Accessories long uses um, recyclable materials. Prestige Arts, Nancy Fire board member, is also a board member of the Sustainability Council. So these are some showrooms or some products that you may want to look into as you design. What do we see now? So we're seeing a lot of indoor communications. We're seeing a lot of increase in anxiety. We're seeing people eating junk food. How many people have said, I have to lose weight? I myself just lost 20 pounds. Decreased activity, because um, people are having a hard time and they're still reluctant to go to the gym, although it's getting better. So we are seeing a lot of that. 
Overall wellness is important, and we also want to encourage and give options of what and how to incorporate new things, new ideas, and safety into the design. I believe we must look at everything from all perspectives of the census and take that into consideration. And that includes a thorough interview of your client. What are you looking for? What are your touch points? What senses, you know, what are your sensory overloads? What do you respond to? Are you a touch person? Are you a sight person? You know, what do you like to see? These are important questions when we're designing. Reducing stress and living better would be something important. I mean, that's what we're all striving for. And I think we all want to make pretty but we also want to make functional and we want to contribute to the planet. Mm -hmm. So did you get the takeaways? Good question. So have we learned how essential oils or how other items can replace the hazardous chemicals that we use? Yes, no? Okay, thank you. Are you able to consider alternative products in your designs? What is essential to promote wellness? Can I ask that question? Anybody? Takers? So taking into consideration the space and the products you're using. Um, and if you would like to further discuss, I'd love to connect. Um, and I can be reached at 516-317-9083. My cards are on the table. And Please feel free to email me if you were not able to get the IDC EC app. Um, and then, thank you. And here, next one, IDC EC is your partner in lifelong learning. So it's access to your electronic records for six years, one permanent IDC EC number. I have two. So, and tracking, download the mobile app to track and scan. And it's wellness in the home. And who has their app open? Or do you want? So anyone have a pen or need to know the code? Um, it's CC-110-447-R1-1000. I'll leave this up so you can grab that. And the course title is wellness in the home. So you should be able to find that as well. Uh, the HALO information is being passed around. The actual unit is here. So if you want to take a look at it, it doesn't have batteries. Um, we thought that was better to travel without. <laughs> um, but it is here, and it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. sure, right here. Are so, these the same? Thank you. Yes. The small baby cup.